the concept of hermaphroditism in medicine can be very confusing and uh, I'll try to unconfuse it uh, or at least I'll give it my best shot. A uh, true hermaphrodite is a person that has both uh, functioning ovaries as well as testes but not necessarily uh, on both sides. Usually it's on opposite sides. Those kinds of people are extremely rare, you know. Uh, it's much more likely when you hear, hear the term hermaphrodite, they're really referring to a pseudo-hermaphrodite. And a pseudo-hermaphrodite is a male with testes, of course, but he has uh, female characteristics of, of various phenotypic expressions. Uh, naturally, when we say male, as we said before, we're talking about somebody with at least one Y chromosome. A female pseudohermaphrodite is a woman, two X's at least, with ovaries, but she has male characteristics or some male phenotypic uh, expressions. And as long as we open the door and start talking about sex, let's talk about it some more. There's various kinds of sex. We already said that genetically, uh, sex is determined by the presence or absence of a Y chromosome. In other words, if you're male, genetically, you have a Y. But there's also gonadal sex. In other words, a person uh, with uh, testes would be a male uh, gonadally, whether or not there's a Y or not. And if you remember, also in embryology, there's the Wolfian duct and the Mullerian duct, and they generally give rise to uh, male and female internal and external structures uh, phenotypically. So you can have an expression of uh, sex or sex defined as ductal expression as well. So just to make sure that, you know, sometimes we use the word sex and they think everybody understands it, but when you get to this topic of uh, hermaphrodites, sometimes the rules change a little bit. We're at the end of the chapter here, and let's talk about uh, single gene disorders, but they don't follow a classical pattern of allelic uh, Mendelian uh, inheritance. They're called single gene non Mendelian disorders. We have already mentioned the fragile X syndrome occurring on the X chromosome, which means only males have it. And um, it expresses itself as uh, different types of ataxias and muscle disorders, which are myotonic. Uh, the ultimate cause of it is a single trinucleotide gene sequence repeat on the X chromosome. And because of that, CGG, 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 happening over and over again, I don't know if it's hundreds or thousands of times, it results ultimately in a failure to produce an FMR-1 protein, which is required for normal neural development. Hence, most of the um, expression of this disease is central nervous system uh, phenotypic expression. Let's talk about a couple of other things. We also know that in forensics, uh, the DNA in forensics is usually my mitochondrial DNA and not nuclear DNA. And yes, there is at least one disease that is a result of mitochondrial nucleic acid mutation, which means it has to come from the maternal side, doesn't it? And that's called uh, Lieber hereditary optic neuropathy. And in order to best describe it, I must admit, I'm going to be using my friend, uh, Mr. Wikipedia, to help me because I have never seen this disease, and you never will. But let's at least describe it properly. LHON, or Lieber's hereditary optic neuropathy, is a mitochondrial inherited degeneration of retinal ganglion cells and therefore their axons and it leads to an acute or subacute loss of central vision and uh, it's transmitted through the mother
primarily due to mutations in mitochondrial, but not the nuclear genome. And only the egg contributes mitochondria to the embryo. And the last concept of single gene non-Mendelian uh, disorders would be the concept of genomic uh, imprinting. And I quickly summarize it by saying it's an inactivation of maternal or paternal alleles, but let's see if we could use Mr. Wiki again to help us a little bit better. Genomic imprinting is a genetic phenomenon where certain genes are expressed in a parent of origin specific manner. A parent of origin specific matter. It is an inheritance process independent of classical Mendelian inheritance, and imprinted genes are either expressed only from the allele inherited by the mother or by the father. And uh, the genes, the maternal genes involved, a couple of them, one is called H19, the other one is called CDKN1C, and on the paternal side, the allele father's genes would be IGF2. Uh, lastly, in gonadal mosaicism uh, is a concept that we mentioned, uh, and it refers to the fact that sometimes you have uh, genetic uh, or chromosomal abnormalities in cells, but it doesn't involve the person's entire protoplasm. It's so only in certain tissues or certain areas, or most likely perhaps in uh, gametes you know, rather than uh, cells which are non-gametes. So uh, that pretty much ends the discussion on uh, genetics. It has always been to me, you know, the, the worst of all of these chapters. But one day I said, you know what, I got to get rid of that thing. I'm going to try to make some sense out of this. I'm going to get rid of my uh, gene curse and take a good attitude. And I hope I did a good job with it. Um, I would also like to remind you that in classical uh, pathology, or what we call basic pathology, or general pathology, representing the first 10 chapters of uh, medical school pathology, we're already done with five. So if you'd like to pat yourself on the back after sitting through these, what, maybe 33 or four movies, if you'd like to pat yourself on the back and say, you've learned half or at least five chapters out of ten, go ahead and do so because I'm patting myself on the back too. Okay, uh, see you uh, for the next group uh, in chapter six and uh, thank you very much.